My mum is Cook Island Māori Ngāti Puro Aitutaki and my dad is Samoan Tokoloan from Atahu Satsupaitia. I am a very passionate Māori and Pacific wahine. I grew up in Wellington, played netball since the age of seven. Mila Rualu Buchanan from Wellington East Girls College. Wellington East made the semi finals last year, and a lot of those players are returning. The captain and centre, Mila Riulu Buchanan, was a member of the New Zealand secondary school team last year, Victoria as they were. Player of the match, we have to present to you. Congratulations. What was most pleasing about that result? We've only had two trainings. I thought that we did really well. Work on for next game. At times, we kind of went away from the ball and we needed more people to punch through. I think the best thing about being a netballer, I guess when you get up there, you know, you can really acknowledge your roots and your culture and your background. I think that's what's amazing about it. Not only do you succeed in netball, but you get to really show them, you know, where you're from and um, acknowledge, like, I'm from Porirua. Not many of you know where Porirua is, but, you know, I can give them a shout out. And I think it's just awesome, just, you know, I love the sport as well, so don't get me wrong. <laughs> I was still new, I was still learning things about myself, things about my game, but I created a really good, um, strong relationships, um, which helped me to, I guess, really be able to spread my wings and make them move up to the stars. I remember the day that I left home, it was quite dramatic actually. It's like a titanic scene, you know, in slow motion. I was driving down um, mum and dad's driveway and honestly, me mum and dad were just bawling their eyes out. I was, I thought it was the end of the world. And then I got there and, and here I am. So still crying every time I leave. Um, but I guess what helped my transition was the culture that we created in the stars. The biggest thing about the stars is the community that they represent. We are the South Auckland Netball team and South Auckland reminds me so much of Purirua and that's why I, I proudly represent where I come from and who I'm representing there because it, it reminds me of my own home. Leaving home was a challenging thing for me, especially because I am a homebody and I also felt that me leaving home, I wasn't able to be here to represent my people and so um, when I did move over there, it took me a while to actually realise that no matter where I am, always proudly represent where you come from and people will always support you no matter what. Yeah, I, um... Sorry. Six years I've been moving back and forth from home. Honestly, it's very challenging. Every time I leave, it gets harder every year. But I think um, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like obviously leaving home, leaving my partner, leaving my dogs, it's hard. You know, I've got my dad, I've got all my family and friends here. Um, so the move's always very challenging. But I'm quickly reminded of, of why I do it when I'm eventually up in Auckland. And I'm lucky because my brother lives out there with his three kids and his partner and so does my mum. They are my home there but also I just love the stars. I'd like to say that I've contributed uh, to the culture. This is my sixth season. Out of those five seasons we have made the finals three times. We've lost every time and the loss hasn't just been by one goal or into extra time, it's been by about 20. But what I love about the team is I'm really able to just be myself and express myself. And, you know, we talk about identity. Well, you see my identity on the court, and I think Kitty allows you to do that. And that, that's what I love. I feel like in any environment, you should be able to do that. If you can do that, then you play your best netball, and people can see that or you can be a, a professional athlete and still be yourself at the same time.
Yeah, look, I'm not going to lie. I um, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't sure about dating a rugby player. I never wanted, like I wasn't out there looking to date an athlete, it just kind of happened. You know, he slid into my DMs and then here we are. Um, I don't blame him either. Apparently he knew me. I didn't know him though, um, of course. And then, yeah, he, <laughs> I'm telling you about my relationship now, but I think you should know the story because it's quite funny. So yeah, he messaged me. Um, it was during the COVID period as well. And um, he said, when you're down, you know, in Wellington next, would love to take you out for dinner. And here I am thinking, who is this guy asking me to take me out for dinner? Like, the confidence of the man. When I came back down eventually, when everything had died down, um, he took me out for dinner and the rest is history. We went on a date about 10 times after that and then um, he told me he loved me on the third date. <laughs> it's been really helpful being with someone who understands on that level your whole career is in the spotlight. Imagine working and everyone can judge your performance or how you deal with something. And not just that, the psychological battles that you have within sport, you know, the constant battles of, am I gonna make teams? I think um, for Dupes and I, we're able to have those conversations and really understand each other and really give each other valuable, I guess, advice on how to deal with these things. He's an amazing man. I would be with him whether he played sport or not. People say he's the male version of me. He brings so much energy, so much fun. Um, he's emotionally intelligent, which is what I love. A man who can actually express their feelings and tell me how it is or tell me how they feel. He just adores me and I adore him, so that's what I love the most about him is that he's just an amazing man. So credit to Donna and Jack, his parents, for um, raising a, a beautiful man. I remember those around me who I had grown up with, who I had made secondary schools with, who I had made New Zealand 21s with, they were making teams. And I remember thinking, like, am I ever, you know, like, why am I not, you know, in the same pathway as them? We've done everything together, age groups, and they're in the Silver Ferns, and now I'm just kind of, kind of here in the, in the stars and not really progressing. And so I remember having a chat to my mum, and I remember, mum and dad, I remember mum and dad saying, you know, you work to a point where they can't not choose you. Um, and that stuck with me and that stuck with me to this day. My biggest achievement was actually making the Silver Ferns development squad. Because for me, that was hope. That was hope that, yeah, Knowles knows, knows who I am. Knowles can see me. Um, and so what, whatever happens from here is really up to me now. That phone call to my parents was quite special and I remember thinking to myself, why is she like so happy? And then it kind of clicked. It was like, yeah, I'm, I'm here, I'm in this space. You basically get called in one by one and you find out whether you've made it or not. And you know, girls are crying coming down the hallway. You're not sure if it's happy tears or sad tears. And, you know, I think that's that's quite a hard part about sport is everyone's your friend and you want everyone to succeed, but at the same time you're competing. And Noel just said, you, you're in. Um, you're going away to the quad series. You're going to England, be ready, and we'll be on a plane within less than a month. I do wish that my parents could have been in the crowd, all of my family, I know they would have loved to have been there but I thought about them the whole time through that national anthem, which is why I was so emotional because I wouldn't be where I am without them and everything that I do is for them. And when I'm moving away and leaving everyone, um, I hope that you know I can make them proud and work to a point where I do make them proud. So in that moment, I felt very proud to represent my family and to, to be there on behalf of them. I didn't start, which I, I wasn't surprised, you know, just the young and coming through. And then half time, Noel's just said about me, um, you're going on. Athletes are very superstitious, it's, it's almost ridiculous. But I wanted my hair in a ponytail. Um, I normally play in a tight bun, but I wanted my hair in a ponytail because I wanted to get a really good action shot. Um, and then when I looked in the mirror at halftime before I went out, I was like, no, Mila, this is business time. So I put my hair up in a bun. 
Anyway, I didn't get any good photos of my debut, um, which I was really gutted about. So I had to sacrifice my debut photo on Instagram of me with a really bad facial, but hopefully everyone ignored that and realized <laughs> the main part of the story was that I debuted. Here comes Silver Fern, number 181, Mila Ruelu Buchanan. She's an exciting player, you know, full of energy, fiercely competitive. And, you know, I think all of New Zealand will be excited to see what she can do. It's funny because people often say that I've been in the Ferns environment for, for a wee bit, and I feel like I have, but I haven't had a lot of game time. So 2023 for me was an opportunity for growth, and that's definitely what I, what I was able to achieve. Was able to start, which was really special. But as you know, you know you're, you're constantly competing against your peers, and you know, um, and, and rightly so. Um, you know, Knowles would choose those who were performing at the time. And if you're not, well, then you're just there to compete and hope that you get on. And I felt like I was really able to showcase, I guess, myself on the international stage. I've always been really proud of where I come from. So it was always a given that I would proudly represent my community, no matter who I am or what I've become hence why I did a degree in social work. A degree that doesn't pay you a lot, um, of, people often tell me, uh, but I obviously don't do it for that. I don't do it for the money, I do it for my people and to make a difference in people's lives. I love colour, colour makes me happy. I feel what comes with colour and fashion is confidence and you know, often I wear these bright, bold things and often people are like, how do you do it? And I think for me, it's just like, whether I look hot or not, I'm gonna wear it with confidence. And I think people look past what you look like and they see the confidence within you and, and how you hold yourself. I love art, I love being able to express myself the way that I create my home environment. Yeah, it's, 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 total, it's my identity. I've got two beautiful dogs. For us, our dogs are our therapy. You know, you have a bad day at work, um, you have a bad game, um, stuff's going on in the world, you come home to the dogs, they don't give a damn about what's happening, they're just so happy to see you. Uh, what I love most is that I'll be gone again for 10 minutes, I'll shoot off to the deer, I come back, it's like they haven't seen me for a year, so um, that's exactly the energy um, that you need in your life. I just want to be happy, and at the moment I am, and I want to continue being happy because you know what they say, as long as you're happy, you will, you will succeed in, no matter what you do. I owe my whole life to my mum and dad. You know, humble upbringing, but I think the biggest thing that they gave my brother and I was love um, and time. And I think one thing that I want to take away from this is the time that you give to your people, to your friends, to your family, is way more important than the superficial things in life. And I think that's why they've created such an amazing woman, me. <laughs>
um, and a wee fracture as well. So I really did the damage. It was just heartbreaking to hear that I'm out for nine months. You know, I had a few days where I just cried and felt sorry for myself, um, which I think you should absolutely go through. You're kind of going through um, a process of grief when you have an injury so extreme like mine. But I think I felt inspired by many athletes knowing they're also going through the same journey or they've come back from having an ACL. You know, you've got the likes of Whitney, one of my close friends, who's come back even better. I just want to firstly acknowledge everyone who's reached out to me. It's been very overwhelming actually and it just shows what an amazing community and family and friends that I have behind me. It's crazy how much people care and, and come together during times like this. But then obviously on the flip side you have people who um, I guess are quick to, to have an opinion, good or bad. I think it's just a reminder to just be kind with, with the things that you say about people and about athletes. Um, because we are humans at the same time, we have feelings, we know when we've played bad, we know when we've had a sucky injury. And whilst it might not impact us directly, um, it might impact others and those who care about us around us. One thing that I've learned from this injury and that I was reminded by dupes is that netball isn't my whole identity. And what I love about, I guess, being able to express my journey here is that people get to see different sides of me that isn't just consumed by netball. And I think for me, this will be a great opportunity, one, to really get myself in the best shape that I can possibly be in. Also an opportunity for me to hopefully learn a bit of te reo, which is something that I'm, I'm kind of wanting to do. And I've reached out to Mediana Salbi um, at the Wānanga Orokawa. I've been a competitive person my whole life. Uh, it doesn't matter what we're doing, it doesn't matter what we're playing. So watching the games, I'm looking at people like, this is your competition, you know, this is their opportunity, awesome. But like, use this as like motivation. Watch out man, <laughs> because I'm gonna be, I'm doing all I can to come back. Um, just to be a better person and player. Whatever it looks like in terms of uh, the future and what teams I make. I just want to be a better person and player and however that looks is will be success in my eyes. I say hey, 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 say ho, oh, oh, say hey. Silver first, silver first, say silver first, silver first, where? <laughs> you run the whole world.